And we are live. Hi, everyone. How is everybody doing? Um, sorry, I was just laughing. Laura Taylor posted, uh, hey, everyone, can you feel it? The excitement in the air. All I could think of was Phil Collins. And there's a TikTok video out there where the, the song, if you know the song, In the Air, where he plays the drum solo, uh, really heavy beat, doo 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 and a fellow working on this computer, and he's in a rickety chair. And uh, right at the drum beat, he falls, and he's hitting everything, the table and everything. Just makes me laugh so hard because it's perfect timing. Oh, my gosh, we have a lot of people in the chat already. This is super cool. Um, I just want to mention really quick that we do have a drawing a little bit later for the Sewer Fest VIP tickets. This is two sets of two tickets. All entries are off now. I, I ju just like two seconds ago, I put them uh, in the hat and uh, I think we're good to pull, but we're going to pull in just a minute. Two sets of two VIP tickets to Sewerfest in Racine, Wisconsin. The show's coming up Sunday, this Sunday, and one of the best shows around. I've been doing Sewerfest for, ooh, my goodness, probably about 12, 15 years and just absolutely, absolutely love it. Thank you, Steve-O, for asking everybody to do the like thing. That helps our channel. That helps the algorithms. It tells YouTube that you really kind of like this thing that's going on. And then it tells YouTube to maybe play more of this content. If you haven't noticed, if you haven't noticed, we hit 15,000 subscribers. 15,000 subscribers. I, I don't even know what to say to that number. Um, I had something come up on my feed in Facebook. Um, and it was 2020, three years ago, three years ago. And the number of subscribers, I think I was posting, hey, we made it to this number in November. And I was hoping for that number by the end of the year. And that number was 3,000. So in three years, we've gone from 3,000 to 15,000. Um, can't do it without you guys. You guys tell me what you want to see. I put out the content. I try to put out the content that you guys are asking for. If ever, if ever, if ever there is anything that you guys want to see on a YouTube video, if it's from animals to the facility to me talking business to, oh my gosh, you just want me to sing some songs, some Christmas songs, I'll sit on here for an hour and I'll, I'll sing Christmas songs. I hope everybody can hear me now that I've been blabbing for an hour. I'm going to uh, I'm going to shout out some names here. Frank the Tank is in the house. Louise uh, Lizards. Moon over Miami. Hey, Moon, how are you doing? Emily, thank you for joining us tonight. I know you have a busy schedule. Randa S., thanks for joining. Philippe, Laura Taylor, of course. Had to uh, sing in my mind, in my head, that uh, Phil Collins song. Cassandra, congratulations recently. Tell everybody in the chat what, what your accomplishment was this last week. Angie says, hello, hello. We have Bradley, Bradley Danka, uh, looking fresh with a haircut. Yeah, how about that? And you said it before Angie did. I'm shocked. I'm shocked, Angie. That wasn't the first thing that she said. Uh, Steve-O, I, I uh, recognized Steve-O a little bit earlier. I'm just kind of going through the, the list here. This is hard to do without Nanette. And if you know... If you've seen on Facebook, I've got to get my phone here. And I'm going to take a selfie because I do that before reptile shows uh, when Crystal isn't in the car with us. And I say, oh, we don't have Crystal for the show today. Well, today we don't have Nanette. You know what Nanette's doing? So Nanette works all day long while I sit here and, and smoke cigarettes and watch the Flintstones. No, I don't do either one of those. And Nanette works all day, and then she goes to school, her school, training um, for another, oh my gosh, uh, four hours on Thursdays. So she has classes tonight, and uh, she should be joining us any any moment here. So I, I hope so, because maybe that's one way to stop me blabbing on and on. Okay, trying to go through the chat here. A lot of messages. J-Bog, thanks for joining us. Uh, Brian V2O. That's kind of an interesting name. Very cool. 
Um, hey, good to see you. It was great meeting you. So literally, uh, when I do a reptile show, somebody can talk and talk and talk to me for like, you know, 10 minutes and they'll walk away from the table and I'll literally forget that whole conversation. You guys know that if you're a long time uh, viewer, you know, I have a five second memory. It's hard. It's hard identifying IDs and on uh, social media and then meeting people. So I'll talk to somebody at a reptile show and we'll talk about, you know, stuff on the table. Or, and then they'll say, hey, I uh, left you a comment on YouTube. And it's like, I'm clueless, man. Uh, and then they'll say, well, it was about the gecko that wa wasn't eating dubia roaches, so I tried crustids. And then it's like, oh, I know, yeah, best friends forever. Uh, Steve-O, I'll break 200 subs one day. Keep it up, man. It, it's a long journey. It really is. It's a lot of work. It's a, a, a passion of mine to do the YouTube. I was just talking to somebody the other day. At a uh, consultation through Buy Me a Coffee. I've had three consultations in about the last week. Emily, Emily, we had a good consultation recently. Um, Kyle, if you're you're in the house, Kyle, we had a great discussion on starting a business. And Corey um, was yesterday. We had a great conversation on photography and starting a business with your photography or reptile business. Catching up, JP Lizards. How are you doing? JP, how did you like that uh, video that I did with Pangea? I recently put out a video uh, with a tour of Pangea reptiles. If you don't know Pangea reptiles, they do crusted geckos, and they do reptile supplies, and they do now enclosures. Oh, my gosh, what else? Oh, they do the crusted gecko diet, which we've been using for years and years and years. Ghouls and ghosts. Uh, ghouls and ghosts. Wally, slow down. Ghouls and geckos, thanks for joining us. So I did this video on Pangea, and I walked in, record, record, and, and uh, Jonathan DeBoer, John, uh, mentioned right away, there's going to be parts where I'm going to have you turn off or not put this in the video, and I want editing approval when you're done, uh, which was cool. I said, yeah, 100%, because there's some proprietary things that they were showing us which I greatly appreciated, but you know, obviously they didn't want it in a, a video for everybody to see. And wrongfully or rightfully, they John thought that I could keep a secret. I can keep a secret. So after about two hours of this tour and interview with John, um, I cut down this video to about 17 minutes. I would have probably cut it down to 15 if I would have just thought, taken all of my talking out and showed real good stuff. Yeah, Emily, no, Nanette, she's in class. She should be getting out any minute now, any minute. So uh, this Pangea, uh, we got to see the warehouse. We got to see shipping, major, major shipping. And I that's what I did for uh, my career project management. I was in warehouse and uh, in sales and marketing, uh, IT, but over those areas to do projects. So I know a lot about warehouses and optimization and things like that. Uh, Tobias, thanks for joining us. I'll get to your question in just a second. So it was wonderful to see their facility and what they were doing and see some of the potential that they have for some changes. Not saying that they're doing anything wrong, but just I'm sure in the next step, moving forward with more automation and more things like that. But then we got to see how they manufactured uh, Pangea, Crusty Gecko Diet. Then we walked into, I can hear the dog barking. I'm sure Nanette's walking through the door. Then we got to see their crested geckos. Oh my gosh, some of the animals that they're maintaining and breeding. And if you saw the video, you saw the egg cartons and there had to be, I don't know, somebody tell me how many egg cartons or uh, egg containers where they're keeping their eggs to hatch for crested geckos. There had to be 50, all marked, all lineage, everything. It was super cool to see that stuff. Then we got to see more of the facility. I uh, talked to John for, again, probably about a half hour and tried to cut that interview down a little bit. So, you know, the whole video that I put out last week, last week, this week, this week was not, you know, two hours. And I think that it worked pretty good. Tobias. Can you see yourself at Michigan Expos in the future? I absolutely can. 
that's one of our goals is to determine, you know, feasibly what we can do, what we can't do. I'd like to travel. I'd like to travel by plane. I'd like to go down to Daytona or California. But Michigan, I mean, you know, four and a half, five hours. So we're doing that for, we did that, you know, three weekends ago for St. Paul, Minnesota. So I can absolutely see Michigan. But I tell you what, Steve, if we do Michigan, you have to be behind the table with me helping and, and uh, talking geckos. And you do the isopods, I'll do the geckos, and Nanette can kind of just chill and and uh, kind of drink her chai tea, super latte, grandiose, whatever it's called. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping to buy us. Uh, meanwhile, I'm smoking a cigarette watching Netflix. <laughs> Outstanding. Um, there you go, Cassandra. Um, Morgana. Yes, yes, yes. It, I, I said your accomplishments, but I, I meant your families. Absolutely. That's super cool. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you, it takes me probably three or four shows, and then I become familiar with somebody. Um, but if I know your name, it, you, you're a rare person because I, I just I don't remember names at all. Just crazy. Hey, folks, I'm going to get to this in just a second, but tonight's show is questions and answers, and I'm telling you what, if you have a question for me, if you have a question for Nanette, if you have a question about Supreme Gecko, if you have a question about doing business, if you have a question about doing shows, reptile shows, whatever you want to ask, if you have a question about the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas, come, Christmas coming up, if you have a question about why I continue to sing when, when I have a terrible voice, whatever you want to ask, ask the question. This one's going to be a kind of a free-for-all. We had something planned a couple of weeks ago, and, and unfortunately that, that fell through. No biggie, not a problem. Things change, schedules change, and I'm hoping that we have a really super big live coming up in the, in, in the next week or two, probably two weeks. Still working out some of the details. Chantel, and I'm still going through the chat. You guys, you guys, Chantel, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Um, we had a great conversation. Emily, if, if you want to make a comment about if it was valuable, if it helped at all, um, I'm not, I mean, you know, we talked about organization and, you know, I don't, I don't say this that often, but I think the one Thing that I'm really, really good at is organization. Now I say that, and I talked to Emily about keeping your notes and everything organized and your to-do list. And I'm sitting here with, you know, five or six little post-it notes that I have to remember to, to go through. Um, but I hope it was a good conversation for you. It certainly was. It certainly was for me. Getting down to some new comments here. I missed one. Where did I miss it? I don't know. Uh, Give me just a second here. And Nanette's here. How are you doing, Nanette? I'm good. Good. I lost uh -oh, my notes. Yeah. I, I lost my place where I was at. What's the dogs trying to get in? Uh, reverse engineering ops. I'll let you go ahead and set up. The dog just came in. I see. Probably will attack the geckos. I enjoyed your videos. Very informative. I like the Pangea video. I wish we could see more of the enclosure setup and sizes per animal sizes. Great video. Thank you very much. And I'm going to say real quick, um, I did not see patient zero. I've seen patient zero before at, you know, with Pangea at reptile shows. So it wasn't that big of a deal not seeing Pangea um, or not seeing patient zero. Patient zero, if you don't know, is the Highball, uh, crust together, a very, very, very different. Uh, Laura, uh, I saw the live on Facebook and no comments, and I was so confused. Now I'm confused. Um, just trying to catch up here a little bit. I'm so behind. <coughs> That's okay. Sorry, I'm behind. No. Okay. Wally, any messages for the pants you guys this Saturday going to the show? They're at their at here in uh, Michigan, and I am uh, actually hopefully meeting uh, Tobias there. Fantastic! That should be that should be pretty cool meeting somebody you know in this community. We do the twelve supreme days of Christmas. I say this over and over and over again that 
that the biggest benefit of the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas is seeing everybody come together and talking and being a part of this big community. Anything to say to the Pangea guys? I don't know if uh, Jonathan, I just noticed, I didn't even have the mic. I hope I, I hope this sounds better. Somebody give me a thumbs up to tell me that this sounds better because I had the mic kind of behind the computer. Is it is on. Um, yeah, we've got some comments going through. So um, I don't know if Jonathan is going to be there. If you want to kind of go through and read through some of the comments, Oops. Nanette. You got it? Over here. Right? Okay. Um, I don't know if Jonathan is going to be there or not, but you can certainly say hi and say uh, thank you again from Wally. Uh, it was incredible. If you see Matt Parks, say hi. And and again, share the fact that they were above, they went above and beyond. Um, I have Pangea, but I'm the jerk who likes uh, Rapash better. This is, you're not a jerk, you know. I'm gonna. I've said this over and over and over again. If you've watched my lives, if you watch my videos, um, I really feel if you're using Pangea or Rapashi, you're doing fine. There's some other brands on the market. I've done a lot of research. I feel Pangea is at the top. Period. Pangea is at the top. If you look at the ingredients, if you look at uh, the order of the ingredients, if you look at um, everything that's in these products, I really, really strongly feel the Pangea is right at the top. Rapashi is just under them. There's a couple of other diets that are a little bit down, and I, I don't know if I would gamble my whole collection on trying something. You can kind of scoot over so you're more on screen there. Um, I don't know if I gamble my whole collection on using a different product than uh, Pangea or Apache. You know, it, I I think we're fine. Exotic World of Geckos. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Tobias, how about St. Louis and ARBC? I thought about St. Louis and ARBC. Our year this last year was filled with reptile shows. So what do we have coming up in the net for reptile shows? We have Sewer Fest this weekend, and then we're going to the Madison, the first Show Me Madison on the 19th. Oh, my gosh. And then we're taking a break till January. I think Chantel is asking about stenodactylus, stenodactylus information. I'm going to star this. I'm going to come right back. I don't know where my stars are. If you go off of the go off of the, the highlight, oh, the star gotcha. shows up. Gotcha. There you go. Um, I'm going to star that. Yeah, and I'm going to come back to that, Chantal, in just a minute. We're going to. I'm going to go through the the questions uh, and answer some of these questions. Um, want to bring up something real quick. I talked about the consultations. We had some great consultations this last couple of of weeks. Uh, thank you, everyone that is our in our Buy Me a Coffee program that have signed up. Again, consultations are free if you're a Buy Me a Coffee member. Um, and like I've said over and over again to, to the people that we've done consultations with, it's not a half hour. If you if you sign up for a half hour, it's not. A, it will not be a half hour. That's because it's going you to talk all the time. Yes, yes, it is. Um, and if you sign up for an hour, it's going to be way more than an hour. And and seriously, I've mentioned this before. If you have questions afterwards, you know the 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 pipe is open. The pipe is open. And I've I've said also. I'd love to get together, you know, four, six months down the road and talk, um, you know, free session, sit down and talk about progress and any roadblocks that you encounter, things like that. So um, these consultations, I really, really hope. Hey, Tom, thanks for joining us. Tom, is this your first live stream for Supreme Gecko? Uh, if it is, you might be in for a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm tending to blab a lot again. Um, what is Tobias? Is story. Okay, so cool, cool, cool. Um, I did want to mention also we talked blabbing. about the shows. Uh, we talked about buy me a copy, and again, thank you, Corey and Kyle. Pro Supreme Days of Christmas. It's not coming up anymore. It's here. So I'm probably spending four to five hours already on uh, the twelve Supreme Days of Christmas per day. What, what, what really? am I doing? What am I doing? So yeah, what are you doing? 
The 12 Supreme Days of Christmas, I'm posting on Facebook. Um, I'm building the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas donations page. If you don't know anything about 12 Supreme Days of Christmas, it's an event that now is in its 12th year on the 12th year of 12 SDOC. Um, we're in our 12th year of 12 Supreme Days of Christmas. It started with, I think I gave away maybe $250 year one. Second year we had vendors, donors, come in and start uh, giving us gifts. It was so fun. Last year, we had over 100 donors. We had over, I, I put the number out there. I, I think it was 100, 150, 175 gifts, totaling over $33,000, including a couple of geckos that were way over $1,000 each. Uh, this year, if you go out there, um, if you're keeping track, if you count up all the donations so far, and I haven't even aggressively gotten all of the donations, and I think I've only got probably about 20 out of, I'm expecting another, you know, 60, 70, 80 donation uh, people donating. But we're already, we're already over $10,000 being donated really? for 2023, and we're not close to the end with this at all. Um Point being is we start giving away gifts. We start the process the day after Thanksgiving. Um, we give away gifts, and the schedule is all on the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas page. I'm going to go out there and grab that real quick for everybody. But we start, okay, we, bear with me here while I get this up. We uh, start on, see, I can't click and talk at the same time. So we start the whole process. If I can get down here, there we go. There's a link to the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas page. And you can see the donors. You can see what was given away last year. You can see the donors from last year. You can see the schedule from this year. You can see the rules. You can see everything that's out there. We can see the specials that people are, are giving to the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas. Something like 20% uh, off on animals du during the donate uh, duration of the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas. I'll throw in, Steve said, I'll throw in a, a Steve-O from my spots and more with me has donated. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everybody that, that's donating. But Steve is throwing in a special little gift in any for any orders that go in during the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas. So some, and, and again, you don't, you, you if you're participating, give what you feel comfortable giving and do what you you feel comfortable uh, donating. But uh, it, it's it's going crazy already. So this is going to be fun. Okay, Abby, I am driving to Michigan this weekend for something else. Where is the Riptal show? Steve-O, thank you for answering that. Welcome to all the new viewers. Thank you for saying that. Speaking of gecko food, I have a natural gecko food from Germany coming in very soon. Hmm. I'd love to see the analysis for that that uh, gecko food. So DNA geckos, send me, send me just like a picture of, of that. If you wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. So we're going to do, Oh, I missed some, some comments here. Yep. I had a marked. Go ahead. Uh, Somebody asked if we were going to Madison. Yes, we are on the 19th. That'll be the last show for this year. Hi, Kimberly. Um, Oops, Taylor had something to say, but the, uh, okay, okay, just a second. I'm trying, yep. I was going back up to the ones I marked. Yeah, I'd really like to know more about cage sizing versus animal size, and your views on this. I'd also love to know more about cohabbing. I have crusties and leeches. Uh, reverse. Go ahead and show that just real quick, Nanette, if you wouldn't mind. There you go. Uh, good question. Obviously, you can type that on Facebook, and some people will say this, some people will say that. You can look it up on Google. Uh, you can ask, should I do it? No. Alexa, what is the proper you size for cool. a crusted gecko enclosure? How Every... many people just had Alexa set off? You See, are right. I can do that because ours isn't named Alexa. No, it is not. Um, there's going to be a lot of controversy around this. So what I'll I'll tell you what we typically tell people at shows. I'm downstairs every day. I'm downstairs every day. If I'm not looking at every single animal every day, I'm looking at every single animal every second day or third day. 
all the time. And that's a lot of animals in our facility, a lot of animals. So I'll, and, and you know, being in the hobby for 20 years, I can kind of watch for things going on, uh, food not being eaten, a gecko in the corner, um, any kind of a mark around the gecko, anything different behavior from that gecko. I know when something's going wrong. So we do cohabitate. We cohabitate our males and females for crescents. I can't speak on lychees. Um, but we do cohabitate crested geckos. Um, males are with the females all the time, except, you know, there's exceptions, obviously. I, some males I'll pull out and move around or keep to themselves if I see them being a little bit too aggressive and monitor them the next time that they're introduced. So for us, it works out really, really well. Number one, because I'm managing them very, very closely. Number two, we cool down in the winter. You know, so our facility is the house in our, too. The house, yeah. That's why I had to go get a sweatshirt because you keep the. Did you think so that I meant you and I? No, I meant the what the like our relationship. Like we don't talk to each other in the winter. <laughs> no, we, we just cool down. Is that something you want? <laughs> it's something that I I get all the time. Oh, you are not nice. You so really our know. our house <laughs> naturally it's freezing cools down in the winter time and especially <laughs> downstairs in the facility um so we'll drop you know probably four to five six degrees seven eight degrees in the facility mm -hmm. um so the crested geckos in the last in the last month where normally we're pulling 20 sets of eggs every single time we check 20 sets of eggs folks every time we check um pronounce that name Sena sac Sagara 18. Sorry. Sanasuke. Thank you. Um, go ahead and post or uh, show that so that people know you aren't crazy. Yeah. Sanasuke. So we're pulling 20 sets of eggs. One's breeding kicks in in April-ish, end of March, April-ish. We're pulling 20 sets of eggs every single, every single time uh, we go in when we check. Uh, there's a good question. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm reading. so at this point in the last month, I bet you I've pulled five or six sets of eggs in the last month. So there are, which means that there is no breeding behavior. There is no, uh, there's really nothing going on other than they're eating and they're pooping. And that's pretty much oh, it. That's nice. See, I just said pooping on, on live stream. We could click that. Let's see how many times you say it. I have a special new clicker. You have a clicker. I have a clicker on my watch band now for Dan. Look, okay, every time I say um. I will. Okay. Every Let time I say going. that word, I'm not going to say it again. So so I tried to take that out, the ums out of my live long form videos. I try as much as possible, but I, I watch <laughs> these live streams and I say the word all the time. Anyways, so we keep them together, whether that's right or wrong. And I'd love your opinion too. Uh, cohabitation for crusted geckos. Now let's talk about size for the enclosures. Adults, I always say 20 gallons per animal. 20 gallons is a minimal size. Now we keep pairs in 20 gallons, but that's really, I think, that I feel that's pushing it. Do we keep uh, adults by themselves? Very rarely. Uh, if you're keeping an adult by itself, 20 gallons is good 20 high is a perfect size to, to do the comparison you can do the calculation um yourself with quartz whatever um there was an there was one right there so mm -hmm. uh we will occasionally put a crust the gecko in a 10 gallon an adult while we're moving around for just a brief uh period of time Oh, juveniles. So we start our, I'm going to go through this really super quick. Juveniles, we start in six quarks right away. And we keep them in the six quarks together, two eggs, two hatches, one container for about a month and a half, two months, two and a half months is really pushing it. Then they get separated out into their own containers, usually a 12 to 15 quart. Juveniles uh, up to about seven or eight months-ish is uh, a 19 quart for us. We have 19 quarts downstairs and they work out really, really super well. So we just lost all, all of our lights. I hope that answered your question. 
You already told them on the first day of that's the supreme days of Christmases, right? It is. So I do the announcement for the first day. I'm trying to find my, and I can't do anything with my lights right now. Um, I try to do the announce. I do the announcement on Friday talking about how you can enter for day one. And then day one, which is Monday, is the drawing. And that's the day after Thanksgiving Friday, which yes. is the 24th this year. Yes. I'm guessing. It I'm is. Gonna... Okay, so I've got to restart my phone November. because my app isn't working for my lights. Okay, let's get another question in here. Um, Angie wants to know if she can get a job. <laughs> That's crazy. Cleaning poop? <laughs> That's crazy because Crystal just asked me today. Are you serious? I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not kidding at all. I'm totally serious. And, um, Crystal just asked why I don't have somebody working for us. I don't know. I really don't. And I say this all the time. You know, find somebody that can do the things that you don't, that number one, you don't like to do. Unfortunately, I like to do everything in the facility uh, other than work on electrical stuff. Or number two, hire somebody that is good at something that you're not good at. And that's that that box is wide open <laughs> because I don't feel like I'm good with hardly anything other than kind of the experience of raising the geckos and the gecko babies. I don't feel like I'm really, you know, proficient with that much. We're learning about electricity right now in science class. And yeah. I had nightmares today watching what you should and should not do with electrical things, thinking about you in the facility at times. I go back to Michael Keaton and Mr. Mom all the time. When somebody asks me about electrical, so uh, what are you installing there? Are you going, uh, you know, this? how many boxes? I go, yeah, you know, 220, 221, whatever it takes. How many amps are you allowed to put on that line? I don't know. We'll just put them on. I don't know. We'll kind of put them on until we can't put any more on. Can we just buy a bigger box? That's like writing a check because your your bank account overdrafted. Okay, next question. Oh, Angie, Angie I didn't a answer Angie's. Yeah, when are we Angie hiring? Wants to know if we're hiring. Have do you ever think about hiring? You I have say, thought I've thought about it. I've thought about it. I don't even know where to start. But, uh, <laughs> that's something that I need to look at because it is a burden right now. Uh, Twelve supreme days of Christmas are just a uh, kind of a strange time for us because it's so. So crazy here. I'm turning on the lights, folks. I'm not ignoring everybody. Put your um, phone down. No. Put your phone down. I'll take it away. 12 screw days of Christmas are really tough for us uh, because it's a lot of work and the animals and the videos and the shows, especially in November now. But uh, normal time, I still struggle with putting out, you know, social media and doing the, the videos and getting the animals uh, going. And getting in my, you know, three to four hour naps every single day. So I, I probably should start looking at hiring somebody. I just need to figure out their responsibilities and what what duties they can perform. He said duties. What duties he can, they can perform in the facility. I just, I'm clueless right now. What brought it up with Crystal? I, she, she out, out, of, of the, out of the, out of the flipping blue. Grandpa, why don't we hire somebody to do stuff downstairs? It's like, duh, duh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Any new geckos? So, Angie, seriously PM me. If you're even thinking about doing some side stuff, maybe we can. I have a hard time downstairs because I'm a, uh, here's another reason. Sorry. Um, like sorry, Cassandra. I, I'm in her interrupting your question uh with still blabbing about with angie's question um i have a hard time with with bringing anybody in as ever as a lot of people know we just don't tour downstairs because i'm a perfectionist um when i'm doing a video when i'm doing a video downstairs it's like okay this area has to be spotless it, they never are they never are but you know to have somebody downstairs i would have to it would be like it would be like bringing somebody in to clean your house but cleaning your house beforehand so mm -hmm. it looks good right does anybody do that i did when i had the clean that's true that, that first time that's true okay go ahead and give me a question it's on the screen fire away <clears throat> okay any new geckos in the works for 2024 yes yes i'm actually looking at 
a pair of geckos right now. I think they're listed on Morph Market for about five hundred dollars. So oh. it, it's it's hard to pull the trigger. It's not hard to pull the trigger. We've had a couple of really really good shows lately. So um, that's really not the thing that's holding me back. The thing that's holding me back is resources. Going back to Angie's point about hiring somebody, I, I'm just out of time right now, and especially in the next couple of months. I really don't, I really shouldn't be adding animals that are going to be more of a strain to my time issue right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not complaining, folks. I'm not complaining at oh, all. No. It's just, it's just busy. Yep. Okay. So uh, new animals, lots of babies. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping next year that I can breed cat geckos. Um, I'm hoping for some, uh, 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 knob tails. Uh, I'm hoping that we can uh, breed more leopard geckos next year, some more lines, some more refined lines, and we're going to continue with the bandits. Bandits were a real down year this year. We, we probably had about 30 or 40 babies, and we just didn't have a, a ton of banded geckos, uh, coleonics. So we're going to kind of amp that up next year. We want to amp up our cave geckos um, I think we only, I've got to stop saying, um, we have to My clicker's gonna break. have, yeah, it's already rolled over 999. Uh, next year we're, uh, this year, I think we produced probably about a couple dozen cave geckos and we need to kind of kick that up a little bit. Uh, gargoyles, this was a low year this year for gargoyles and we'll push that a little bit next year with some new pairs that are coming up. We've got, we finally have some males. It's, we are so male poor down in the facility I, I probably have 25 females and i probably have like seven or eight males so any male that we get you know i hold back i look for males at shows so okay go ahead i think i answered that okay question i have used spangio for my crusts as well as other uh brands really but mine seem to do very seem to be very partial to handmade Home, handmade handmade oh, food. Okay. Should I be adding calcium? My food is made or blended fruit. Tobias, I'll be very honest with you. I, I don't know a reason, and somebody help me with this. I don't know a reason. Make sure that we don't have other comments yep, kind of I adding to this. Somebody give me a reason why you would make your own. I tried for a couple of months, and from a cost standpoint, it just didn't make any sense because I was making too much. I was not making enough. It was just, you know, do I use two bananas? Do I use a banana and a quarter? What do I do with the other three quarters of a banana? You so, eat it. yeah, could do that. Um, there was a question down there. I saw that it. was to one of the people that are in the stream, and they'll answer. I think it, it was to Crystal's Black Knight. Anyways, um, it was it was hard for us to keep up with, you know, the the control of how much we were making and. You know, I know one person that makes their own and does a really, really good job of it. But, oh, my gosh, if you saw my Pangea um, video, you saw that they went through. If I remember what I actually edited. I think they went through six. Somebody help me here. Six or seven years of using Pangea yes. before they put it out on the market. Six or seven years. It's one thing to have a diet and we've just talked about overseas diet here it's one thing to have a diet introduce it after a year i i folks i'm not going to use a diet after after it's been tested one year i want to see it tested for two or three i want to see what those breeding females do second third fourth year of being on a new food that's me so it's tough and to get that balance to bias of the right ingredients to make sure that you have the right fats and proteins then to make sure that you have the right uh, supplementation in there that's not so easy not so easy you can do it and if you're doing it as a treat super cool if you're going to give you know kind of a treat we do the we'll put honey in into our food as a treat once once in a while but um Boy, I just don't, I don't, I don't advise unless you really, really know what you're doing because it could potentially impact the animal's uh, conditioning for the, the following years. There you go. Okay. 
Uh, Wally, I don't think I ever asked, what is your favorite isopod? And if it's not the same answer, is there one you want that you do not have yet? Um, the Scarlet Marinolella, uh, uh, mural, I, now I can't say it. Now I'm just stuck on it. Everybody knows what it is if you're in isopods. Marinella, uh, Scarlets are super, super cool. And we have six of them going into the 12 spring days of Christmas as a giveaway. So I might have to ask the person donating them if I can ship them from our home and all of a sudden they'll magically not get shipped. And you no, can't we do that. We don't do that. Um, that that is a super cool looking one. My favorite right now that I have downstairs is probably Porcelio uh, Boulevard. I just I just like the Expanse. This is another super cool one. I love the big Spanish isopods. Anybody else? Anybody else love the Spanish? What if you keep isopods? Tell me what your favorites are uh, in in your collections. Okay, I'll go down there in a second. Here's another cool. question. Okay. And I'll go down to do All right. Comments. What's the hardest part of starting a breeding business? Making the best choices with your capital. Everybody's capital, unless you're a lucky son of a gun, everybody's capital is limited when you start off. And I say over and over again that first two or three years, you better be sinking a lot of your um, net income into <clears> the <throat> business. All of your money should be going right back into the business. Don't be pulling it out to go to a Texas Roadhouse and celebrate a good show. Sink it right back into the business and get yeah. a better banner. I get, get a drive through after the show. Yeah. Well, I let you supersize. So yeah, you I do. don't know what you're complaining about. So all of your money starting off should go into that breeding, uh, into, into your business and your breeding business. Now, Steve, Steve and I had this conversation before. How do you start when you don't have any money? Well, you do simple things. And he's doing a great job with this. You start with, is, is, and I'm going to kind of spill the beans on Steve-O here. He's, uh, and Steve-O, if you have a, a link to your business or if you want to mention your business on Etsy, please go, please feel free to do that. So he started his business, doesn't have a lot of capital, like everybody, everybody starting. So he's going out to the woods. He's collecting. Um, Bark is collecting mosses and he's putting it on Etsy and he's selling it and packaging it up and doing the social media stuff. And that's how you start. And you make you make ten dollars here, you make twenty dollars there, and you buy more stuff for your business. And maybe you buy, you know, something else like setups. Maybe you spend that money and buy setups and then sell those setups for a couple, three, four, double the price that you bought them for. Now you make a little bit more money and diversify. And again, man, I've got something in my eye. That first couple of years, my finger, yeah. I have you in my eye. Oh. Oh. That first couple of years, money should be, if it comes in, it should be going right back into the business. So that's my number one key. The other key about doing a breeding business is make good choices with the animals that you buy first. You should really have, if you go into a breeding business and you don't have a three-year vision of where you want to be, uh, I think that's a problem. I think that you should look at least three years in the future and all of your animals that you're buying right now should be pointed to three years in the future, meaning that don't buy a couple of crusted geckos, for example, and assume that in three years, you're going to be buying the top of the line. Buy the best mail that you can possibly buy and fill in the blanks with nice looking, but not top of the line females. Okay, Kara yeah. Shea has answered your question, and I think like four different messages now about her favorite isopod. Yeah, go. She can't make up her mind, basically. So what, what are what they? She's telling us she has so many. She's got Gastroy in here. She's got her zebras she likes. She said they all have something unique about them that she likes was one of her comments. She's just, she, that's something about each one that I have she likes. Yeah, I, I um, completely A couple agree. other people said Spanish. I think it was Spanish um, isopod. Hoffman say I, you know, I said Boulevard, but if I were, you know, again, two minutes later, I'm going to say something else. And that's, I, I love Hoffman say And Angie, 
saw your comment. This is to you. Yeah, it's the only way I'm going to stay awake here, Angie. And I have homework I have, later, so yeah, I, I have need to stay up. Probably four or five more hours. Um, somebody wants rubber duckies. I absolutely love my red ember bees. We have oh, ember bees. Ooh, um, Orange we have brush. rubber duckies in the giveaway. Now, if you ask me um, who has them, who's giving them away, I couldn't tell you. I, Not it's right gone. now. Not anyway. right now. Orange. Right now, all that I'm doing for the, I've got to tell you this real quick. All that I'm doing for the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas is taking information, putting it on the web page, formatting it, making sure it's correct and um, the right information and everything works. I, I'm not connecting people with, with gifts and everything. It's just so hard. Okay, go ahead. All right. Um, you answered the question about when you take the, the um, little ones out of the six tubs, but yeah, they want to know if you quarts. have heat. Heat, good question. Great question. Yes, we do. We absolutely do. So for our six quarts, we have heat. We're running, I'm actually running cable because it's so much easier to run cable. That keeps the back of the enclosure warm. I have my, I actually have, and this is a little bit different. This is different. I have my hide and my paper towel in the back. And I keep my paper towel moist, obviously. But all that's right by the warmth that so that word. there's, what's that? Nothing. I said I should be putting that word in my clicker. What's that? Nice? Moist? moist? Yeah. I got yelled at. For, I know you did. Yeah. So... So these things don't click in my mind. Um, so <laughs> a lot doesn't click. A lot doesn't click. It's just like a, yeah, it's not clicking here, not making sense. Yeah, so put the puzzle together. <laughs> what drawer did I put that in? <laughs> no, it's here somewhere. I know it was, I know I put it it's away. It's in this house, right? It's, it's in this dresser somewhere here. So what the he heat, cable. Um, babies, yeah, absolutely. So for the juveniles and for the adults, adults I want to cool down, but the juveniles I want to keep kind of warm. So we try to do room uh, therm uh, thermometers. We we do room heaters for our uh, juveniles and for our adults. We just bought two uh, uh, space heaters. We recently. did, yeah, a couple of months ago. Okay. It's not recent. Oh, I thought you were telling me something else was coming in. Um, exotic World of Gecko says that his panda kings. Panda kings are cool. They reproduce. They are fun. They actually Fast. reproduce. Other, like, not like Cubera, so they can't be Cubera's, I don't think. No, but they're I'm cool. just kidding. Yeah, they are cool. Um, all right. Oh, Angie. Somebody said moist. Moist. Gag. moist. Um, Thanks, Reverse. Here. Thank you very much. I have a bunch of messages here. Yeah. Let me go back up now for questions. You should again. see how Nanette's scrolling here. It's like... <laughs> Oh, I, I wish I could even, you know, it's like. Well, I'm trying to get everybody. Besides breeding isopods and reptiles, I make soaps and candles. Would that be something people would want in their SCO, uh, 12 SDOC, Abby? Abby, Abby, Abby. Yes, idea. absolutely. Definitely. I, people, would you like a really cool gift of soaps Homemade and soaps. candles? Absolutely. I. I love all the gifts that we get, but come very unique. Boy, how do I say this without sounding like a snob? Um, during the 12th stream days of Christmas, we try to organize the days to build up to obviously the 11th, 10th, 11th, and 12th day where we're giving away some of our bigger gifts. And during that time, we give away some, you know, bigger really fun animals, gifts. fun gifts, fun gifts. But it's truly, folks, it's day two and three and four but where we're giving away things like candles and and stuff like that that's fun for me to see you know people go yeah i really want that i, I don't i don't want a lychee i don't want a lychee so i'm not going to go ahead and enter this but oh my gosh a, a good smelling candle mm -hmm. what's a good smelling candle vanilla vanilla is a good one i like yeah. sugar cookie ones yes um baseball glove can you make a candle that smells New baseball glove. Ew. Oh, that's some that's some good smell right Yuck. there. All right, Cave Gecko, PM Wally on that, or email him and he can let you know. Did he ever get your offer for? If you didn't to donate, so it, um, definitely PM us. Yeah. Oh, oh. If you have um, asked to donate to the Twelve Supreme Days of Christmas, and I got your email. If I got your email, then you have received an email from me. 
If you don't see it in your inbox, then it's in your, it's probably in your spam folder. I've had this over and over because what is it called? What what's the event called? Twelve SDOC. What else is it called? Christmas. Twelve. Twelve days of Christmas. Twelve supreme no, days of Christmas. I'm trying. You're Jetson. You're <laughs> fired. And what is it? What kind of an event is it? It's a raffle kind of giveaway. It is not a it's raffle. It's a giveaway. It's a giveaway. So All the right, problem. I'm not going to answer any more questions. The problem is that if you received an email from us, it, it certainly had the word giveaway because that's what it is. Oh. And. Outlook and a lot of other mail services say, ooh, give away. I'm going to hide that from this person. And and it should. I appreciate that. But watch, look for your spam box. Yep. And... Emily, go in your spam box. She said she didn't get hers. Yep. If if you gave me your email, I've uh, 100% I know that I put it into our um, list for MailChimp, and I, our mail uh, server, and sent that in. New baseball glove or old ragged old oh, yeah right? right wally i think i can get some leather scent if you really want a baseball scent he probably doesn't even remember i lol angie I, I, what do i not remember i don't wow know. i'm could shocked be that i didn't remember florida fasts um oh. i'm oh, come on. uh i was thinking of another scent how about uh like a uh, cigar yuck okay i'm just throwing it out there and that is a multitasker sure as long as she's doing one thing at a time, she's a great. Okay, Wally gave me some ice pods for my crusted enclosure. I have no clue what they, That's what, what kind, but they're remember. tiny and fast. I love them, and they're breathing like crazy. Probably uh, powders, powder blue. Powder blue. So that was like 14 years ago. I don't know. Maybe no, it's probably it four years time. ago. It, it probably is powder blues. Look right. to see if they look bluish. I know bluish. I have more questions here. Okay. Of course, I could probably hit the start thing and then oh, see it, right? See, that's That'd what be I... would easier. So, um, Cassandra is asking, go ahead and show it. Cassandra is asking how Crystal's Black Knight is doing. It's doing really well. Mm -hmm. We had an issue with eggs this year. I set up a new incubator. I thought the fan was working. It was on. <laughs> so here's the problem. And I tell you what, if you're doing a lot of things, talk about hiring an employee. If you're doing a lot of things like I am in the facility, sometimes you... You watch for things and you know things are there, but you don't go in depth to make sure of things. Like I can hear the misters going on. Well, is the sump full to make sure that it's actually misting? I'm, I'm pretty up to, on that. But we had a, a new incubator that was working really well, but the I had a fan to circulate the air. Unfortunately, that fan kept running, but it didn't uh, spin, so it really wasn't circulating in the air. Unfortunately, the leopard geckos were right in the spot where they should have gotten more heat, and they didn't, so we lost we lost a few eggs from our leopard geckos this year. Not a ton, but oh. that was that was all the black knight eggs, so we had probably four black knight eggs that unfortunately didn't turn out, and probably four or six other eggs that didn't turn out. We got we, Crystal, Got two babies mm -hmm. and they look super cool. I'll do a she video on them. She does. She loves them. She's the the one is growing pretty well. So she we'll like see how mama. that goes. The mama's mean. <laughs> She's feisty. Um, this is kind of dark, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what would happen if you were gone tomorrow? Would Supreme Gecko survive? I don't think so. I don't think so. And we've... The, we've had that conversation. We've had the conversation. Kind of, we've kind of worked out the details just in case. COVID or, made us think about it. Yeah. That was when we really And that's about natural. It. And if you haven't planned your estate, you should have certainly planned your estate and blah, blah, blah. But if it didn't survive, if if I wasn't here tomorrow, we have an action plan to, to um, how do I say it? Liqui liquefy it, Li liquidate to some point, yeah. to some degree, and and move on. What I don't want is everybody in this house to have a burden to take care of things that they can't or aren't knowledgeable about, or or simply don't have the time, or just can't uh, do the same things that that I'm doing. Unfortunately, so and Crystal certainly isn't isn't to that Not point. At that age, and though. there's no way we're going to force something like that on her. She has to make that decision, not not us, not not that circumstance. So, good question. There's a question right there, JPs. Um, 
Yep, there you go. Oh, I had another. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and we're on that. Question, have you ever been interested in other exotic animals like a monkey? No. Serval or <sighs> other mammal? A baby goat. You won't let me have them. I love that little tiny baby goat. The miniature Where would goat. we keep a baby goat? Oh, I would find place for In the winter? Goat. I would find a place inside. In the winter? Yes. Inside. In your, your craft room? inside. Yeah, but that's no, already my planned. son's living in my craft room. There's no room for the goat. So where's it going to go? In, I don't know. In the bathtub. I will find a place for um, a baby Sugar goat. gliders are really cool. It's just that they take so much care and they're so personalized. They they want one person, That from what I've heard. Um, Net Wally, you're not allowed to pass me on it. I'm hoping not. Oh, we're hoping not. I'll drink to that. Mm -hmm. Angie, I'll drink to that. Okay. Um, hey, and uh, J-Bug said, I don't really want to think about that. I don't either. No. I don't either. It but was a hard topic when it came up, but it was COVID, and we just kind of, I kind of panicked a little bit because I was like, what do I do? We, You didn't panic. We a were little just bit. Kind of, like, eh. We talked about it. We said, yeah, let's sit down one afternoon. Let's just kind of go through this. Um, I'm trying to find. 13 it, Supreme Days of Waffles. Love it. If you're not waffle times, knowledgeable about this yet, but ISO Buddies has coming up. Sometime at the end of this month, I should I have it on my calendar, but he has the um uh I don't even know the name of it, uh pod giving day. Oh, that's um, right. ISO pod giving day. So we're uh, Russ Wilson from Aquarimax Pets and Josh from ISO Buddies and myself, we're getting together and we're we're going to eat waffles. Now, what kind of waffles? We don't know yet, but there's going to be some different kind of waffles. Here. What's your favorite leopard gecko more from Gecko Man? Gecko Man, you how are you question. doing? Okay, I'll get to that one. I just saw Gecko Man, and I wanted to grab that one. My favorite gecko. Uh, it would have to be, it would probably be probably a, like a radar or a raptor. There's some just strange ones. I, it's, I wish. I wish Enigma didn't have the problems it had. I, I really do. Le leopard geckos that really catch my eye. It's it would have to be eventually something coming out of the black night. I I'm not a big fan of the black, but I, I love orange and I love red. So uh, uh, tornadoes are really super cool too. Okay, hope that answered the Answer question. The question. Taylor Marking is uh, asking. I personally love the devil rice isopods. Devil's rice isopods. You know what devil's rice? Well, you just said dwarf whites. Yeah, dwarf whites. Question: What is the best way to make your own incubation area for the dwarf whites? I don't. I'm thinking not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say for dwarf whites, all you have to do is keep them warm. You know, in mm -hmm. the upper seventies and. Probably moister than people think that they should be, and keep leaves in there all the time, and keep bark. And the white um, wood that Angie was uh, grabbing for me before was just is just perfect for for dwarf whites. Now, if you're talking about a building your own incubator, it, I have a video out there on some of the not not all the details, but a lot of the details. But we use a wine cooler. We we strip it back a little bit, and then we just run a, a heat uh, heat mat, not a heat mat, of uh, uh, heat tape. Sorry, onto a thermostat and obviously a fan to circulate that heat, and that's what we do for an incubator. Uh, and it works out really, really super well. Usually, if you you check the fan once in a while. Okay, don't forget uh, gecko coke. Okay. Gecko Cove has another that one. Okay. No, that's the one we answered that right. Who is asking it? Sanosuke Sagaria. Okay. I'm going to answer SS's question. <clears throat> if you're answering questions and have time, do you have any pointers on killing forid flies in their larvae? Is that is that uh, uh, fungus gnats? I got outside my. I got outside my ISO bins covered with uh, forid mm. flies. I don't know what those are. I, I don't know. I, I wish I knew specifically what that was. I'm at a, a loss here. If anybody can help me with what that is. If that's fungus flies, fungus gnats, I'm sorry. If that's fungus gnats, you're going to have that with new enclosures as they they um, become more bioactive. As, as long as once they start maturing a little bit, those fungus gnats should go away. Just like you have house plants and you plant a house plant. 
that issue goes away. And don't forget, folks, we're going to do that giveaway probably in just like five or 10 or 15 minutes here real quick. Um, we're doing a giveaway today? We're doing a giveaway for sewer oh, You didn't tell me that. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that was up in it. Just kidding. I've had a long day. You have. You're, you've had a long week today. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you have. Mm -hmm. In the last 24 hours, we've had, I tell you, it's for crazy Supreme right Gecko, now. we had a long, yeah, it was like pretty, five minutes. Or, it was pretty rough. <sighs> yep. Okay, so fungus Thanks. gnats. For bringing it yep. up again. It's all it's all good. So fungus gnats, we do the yellow strips when we have new enclosures. Like if I'm going to set up ten new enclosures, we're going to get fungus gnats. I set up the yellow strips and try that to keep I them away from. Into. Yeah, you always walk into and you're pulling it out of your hair. Yeah, and, it's never. Remember that time that we had to cut your hair because you had three no, but strips. I thought of Crystal that. was going to have I that. <laughs> so, um, if that's what it is, fungus gnats, that's the best advice I can give the, the uh, catchies are pretty good. There's another product on the market. That's pretty good. Uh, mechanical. Uh, the other method is use fans. I mean, if they're flying around and you have, if you have fans and that, if you have a bench and you have like six containers in a row, you have your a rack system, have a fan blowing. So the, the gnats just can't land, you know, that they can't get to them. Okay, go ahead. All right. Now that I figured out what I was doing wrong. Chandra. Let's do Chandra's because she's, I don't know if Chandra's here. Stenodactylus, stenodactylus are super easy. Sand, they like to burrow. So you want to have kind of that uh, builder sand, the modeling sand, make it hard, but give them a place that they can burrow in. I knew somebody that gave PVC to, it was like a half, inch, not a half, three quarters to an inch. And they buried that into the sand and put you know these hard um modeling so they they wet the modeling sand but they put the tubes in and it hardened then they put sand into the tubes so that the geckos so the openings were just right on the surface of the hardened sand and then the geckos would go into the tubes and push the sand out and that's where they laid their eggs uh sand heat they like heat obviously uh, miss them every couple three four days and uh, you know appropriate food items like mealworms and crickets dubious baby dubious they love them i'd have to leave michigan to work for you wally sorry um i want you here at eight o'clock in the morning and i want you here until six o'clock at night steve and I'm not i don't care who, how you get home i, I don't he care. wants you to move to him yeah, you uh, you hire the trucks. You hire the trucks and the personnel to move, and I'll think about it. Maybe I oh. maybe when Pangea moves out of their facility, I can just take over their facility. That's close to see. That's like an hour away or so. Thank you. What's the next one, Cassandra? I'm going to hit Cassandra. It's on. Oh, it's on any screen. recommendations on options on snake or lizard species that would be good for reptile education events? There's a local show that weekend, this weekend. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> you finished it. This weekend, I will be looking for another edition. Uh, Cassandra Pope probably is in more touch with that than I am. Um, what you want is things that are big, that are, are slower moving. You don't <laughs> want iguanas that can be temperamental, unless you have a super, super, super nice tem uh, tempered iguana type of animal you want big you want slow movie uh you want something that people will go maybe at the end of your show you can talk about and then sh and then let people handle if they want to tarantulas tarantulas that's a show stopper right there right yeah i, I suppose aren't that cool that really super cool because people can't see them it's not a showy so go with showy animals big i think of um I think uh, uh, Discovery Snake, Snake Discovery. Thank you. And some of the th we've gone to a couple of their presentations, and they're showing bigger animals. Uh, Axolotli. There, you can't hold them, but they're pretty showy. Turtles, turtles, turtles are slow Kids moving. Love to watch them walk. Love to watch them walk, and you can pet them and tap them on the back gently. Well, have you seen the <clears throat> LP panda morph? LP panda, those are my new favorite Leos. LP, I seen those. long play, is that like records? Long play 
Pandamorph records? I have not. I, you yourself? know, I've heard this. Yeah, I know. I've heard of the LP, but I don't think I've, maybe I have seen them. It's hard because my focus is so much on rare, get rarer geckos, uh, kind of like your leaf tails, JP, but uh, I, I've seen them and they're pretty cool. I just don't remember them that well. Okay. Who's the cook in the house during Thanksgiving? <laughs> it's not you. My sister comes up the night before and we spend a lot of time together and have fun cooking and getting everything ready because we have a large family that comes and we make a couple birds. And is that your favorite holiday? It is absolutely my favorite holiday. It could be the only holiday of the year and I would be thrilled. It's one of my favorites. It's too. fun. And our favorite, my favorite dish is, is Thanksgiving. Uh, another favorite of mine is Christmas. Another oh, yeah. favorite is Easter uh, and Halloween and, and 4th of July. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Favorite dish at Thanksgiving? Uh, favorite, oh, the cranberry sauce, right? Who doesn't, if you have turkey and you have the, um, the stuffing and everything else and you don't have the canned uh, cranberry sauce, I don't want the, the, the fresh, you know, with the berries. And I want that canned, Jelly I want it so stuff. that you, you pop the top and you go, and it goes into the into the dish, and you can and it little, literally looks like a, a reddish dark red can of cranberry sauce, mm -hmm. still with that form. That's that's why I like cranberry sauce, and that's my favorite dish. Sorry, mine's sweet potatoes. Ouch, okay, that hurt. Non gecko lizard. What's mine? Yeah, a chameleon. I don't know. No doubt about it. I don't know that I have a favorite. Cassandra told me that I could keep the goat in my bed. Works for me. Will there be cookie giveaways? Oh. We could probably do some cookie <laughs> giveaways. Gecko Man says yuck to my cranberry, canned cranberry yeah, stuff. I don't blame you. I like the fresh stuff. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there will be cookie giveaways. I'm baking on the 16th this year. So, yes. Kira we Shea says she might try it. Let me know how you like it because yeah. it's like it, it's like coffee. It's an acquired taste. Well, and you don't like the one that has the whole cranberries in it. You like the one that's more of a gel with no cranberry. Yeah, I want I want the you cranberry don't want the jello. One. Yeah. All right. Somebody just said puke. Good for them. <laughs> Emily is saying it's her her favorite holiday. It too. is. It's absolutely my favorite. Mother's Day is mine. That's cool. Oh, Mother's Day is a good one too. And then go to Menards for Black Friday. Oh, Black Friday shopping go. always happens. Black tongue skink spirited. I'm not sure where they're going with this right now. Favorite uh, non gecko, oh, maybe. Oh, okay. Um, eight to six. We have break from memory. No, I said Steve would have to be here for. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm sure for. I'm looking to see what else there's there. What was that? If a if a uh, reptile, if a gecko, if a gecko could be the size. Can you go up? Oh, I'm sorry. We're going the wrong way. It's gone. Can you go down? Go down. Go down. It was Cassandra. Okay, stop. Go back up. <laughs> if a oh. gecko could be the size of a dinosaur, what type of gecko would you want to see supersized? Okay, let me. A you find pictus. another question. I'm going to think about the. No, not a picnic. See, the problem with that. the question was there wasn't a question marking it through me. I'm that's thinking dead air, it. folks, dead air. That's good stuff on, on live. For you, it's We're going to do the giveaway after the next question. Not did after it, this one, but not after the next one. What was wrong with Frank? Oh. Somebody said, I hope he feels better. Did he get sick? Oh. Mm. What morph is easiest to sell? I wanted okay. to get the most morphs in the most recent video, but I... Definitely seems like a risky time. Mm. Watch that video because I kind of mentioned, you know, it's what what's the best, what's the easiest to sell? The easiest for us to, has always been Dalmatians or pinstripes are still a good good animal to sell for crusty geckos. I'm assuming that's what you mean. Uh, what's the other one? Let me think for a second. I had the, oh gosh, red Harleys are always really, you know, flashy on a table but dalmatians we put a good dalmatian on, on the table and it's gone uh what's the best way to keep mi mini geckos what uh style of enclosure do you like when keeping geckos for minis for micro geckos anything that you can find that is like escape proof mm -hmm. 
you know, it, the better you can contain micro geckos, the better because they are so small and they will get out. And if they don't, they'll have babies in the tank that you won't find the eggs for. And the babies will hatch and the babies will be on your desk. Honest to goodness, I had a morning gecko about a month ago sitting on my desk. I was doing something. I look over because I saw movement and it was a morning gecko sitting on like and it just sat there. And I called Crystal and we caught it and it was so, like super cool. Okay. I was um, home. Thank so God. mini geckos, five to ten gallon uh, tight top. Make sure the holes. If you have a screen, make sure the holes aren't aren't too big. Uh, uh gecko man who designed uh, the name is Bobby Delaney and uh, two. Uh, Bobby Delaney did my original logo the one that you see on the live stream with the crested and the knobtail and the picta that was from grayson howland howland he's donating and he's donating a package for design and he, for the 12 supreme days of christmas sorry go to the 12 supreme days of christmas look up um look up grayson and you'll find his information uh, it's hard for me because I know the name and it's kind of stuck there for his business. But if you just look up Grayson, G-R-A-Y-S-O-N, you'll find his. And he designed my newest logo. I like the old one still. I like this new one, but I like the old one too. So it's hard for me. I'm going back and forth all the time. Okay. I found a morning gecko in my green-eyed tree frogs enclosure yesterday. Uh, no more questions. Let's do a drawing. I didn't see any. And if I missed any, I'm sorry. Okay. I think we got them all, though. Thank you, everyone, for, for hanging tight with us while we go, went through this. In the hat, we have names from the video. And you're going to bear with me for two seconds here because I'm going to go to that Sewer Fest video. And I'm just going oh. to real quick check. No new comments. Okay. So we have all the names, all the names, folks, all the names in the hat. My old, my old hat. Cassandra, what kind of merch do you want to see? Okay, I'm going to make sure that all the names here, they're not in a fold. I think I just showed that some of the names here are in the fold. Okay. We're going to draw two names. Each winner will get a VIP package of two tickets to the Sewer Fest show so you can get in early, which is a huge, huge benefit. Anything. I need ideas. <laughs> our our shirts are selling like I, our shirts I'm are selling. Right They're selling like lot. crazy. <clears throat> to see somebody wearing a shirt come into the show mm -hmm. is so cool. Good luck, everyone. Thank you, Philippe. Podfather Do we have shirts? any of the Podfather shirts? I tell you what, I, think I have, have one or mm, I think I have one. I think Emily message think... Nanette. And I tell you what, for all that you've done for us, if we have one left, it's yours. I think I still have one, but I don't know what size <clears throat> okay. it is. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. Do you want to draw? Stickers, keychains, small items. Draw one. I got one. So the winner will have to tell the secret word, which is Wally, to Shane when you walk in and say, hey, I won. And the secret word is Wally. I won the VA. No, I'm just kidding. Everybody would claim that. Okay. Do you have a name? The name is, hopefully, hopefully this will show Randa Dang. S. Congratulations. So Randa S., if you're in here, say, hey, I'm here. But uh, contact me after the live stream. Uh, Sarah Sunshine just showed up, like, two minutes before we're going to end the show. No. I'm just kidding. Um, J-Bug, we were just talking about a long sleeve T-shirt. For the show, for um, us, and we were that's in the works, possibly. That's an interesting idea. Magnets, magnets is a really interesting idea, it is okay. Randa, ah, Randa there you go. There. Okay, contact me, message me on Facebook, and I'll give you the secret word that I'm giving to Shane so he oh, knows that, it's that you. Because when you said that, I was like, Why are you saying that out loud? Everybody's what gonna are, walk in, everybody's hi. I won the 12 Supreme Days of or the, I'm sorry, I won the Supreme Gecko uh, VIP tickets. The secret word is Wally. I'll make Shane sure the secret word is, no, yeah, he would. Wouldn't. That would be so funny. 
you would. That'd be funny. Okay, one more. So that's for two tickets. Brandon, that's for two tickets. This is for two tickets. He'd be back on Make the Make sure, sure that if you do not win, you check out those Sewer Fest shirts that Shane is uh, offering this show. You can buy a special, I can't remember exactly what it is, but VIP tickets and the t-shirt for a discounted price. This okay, we're done with the this. Race, the show in Sturdivant, correct? This is for the Racine Sewer Fest show Sturdivant. coming up Sunday, this Sunday. Okay, you have a name. Okay, we'll see if I put that right side up. Hopefully, no way it's focusing on. Do anything. I have to bring Robert? No, you I can bring whoever I think you I want. I know who this is. Come on, oh, I know who it is. I read it. I know. There you go. J Bugs, congratulations! That's super cool. And you know what, folks? Any name coming out of that hat, if we would have picked, I would have gone. Hey, that's super cool that you won. You're a goof. I am a goof. Okay, Congratulations, so everybody. I have 11 ums from the time you set it on my little handy dander clicker. See this? It's so fun. That's bad. It sits right on my watch at work. And I Why do you guys away. watch us live? Because I keep saying that oh. word over and over oh. again. 11. So that, said that works out three too. Times. I said voice three times. Four so times. you can have dual clickers? No, I just remembered that one. Okay. No, I could if I had more of them because we have 10 of them. What now. does that we make? A, an um me. every six minutes? Yeah, There's they're... way more than they that. Just bought okay. Everything. No more questions. I think we're going to end the stream because you have like 17 hours of homework. Tonight. I have some homework and I'd like to eat dinner. And the bears are on. Oh, are the bears on? Oh, I'm, I'm gonna, still alive. I'm going to do some work on the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas on my laptop. And uh, I'm going to go watch the bears. Go we do love some your multi multi No, you don't. You're 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 just being nice. No, you don't. Nobody likes ums. So um, make sure the winners stop by and say hi to us. Blake, thank you very much for joining us. Everyone, thank you very much for joining us. Great questions tonight. If you're if you didn't win, you're planning on going to Sewer Fest. Stop by the table and mm -hmm. say hi. There's nothing that makes us happier and prouder of what we're doing here with YouTube. Then if you like the stream, subscribe, hit that notification bell all, and stop by our table and say hi. It's just nice to meet the face to the name always, sometimes. Always. Can't so wait that, to meet Frank. So that when we meet and we shake hands and we talk for, for a couple of minutes, once you walk away from the table, it'll be like, uh, who was that? Who was that? No. And don't come up and say, I'm the guy that sent you a question about the crusted. Because... That one we'll Philippe, say hi and say <laughs> who you are so that I recognize you and can match a name to a, a face. Good night, all. All right, good night.